Okay, who is ready to finish their jumpsuits today? This is McCall's 8218. You are watching video four in a five part series where I take you through each and every step of sewing this cutie little jumpsuit, uh, knit jumpsuit from McCall's. So like I said, we're almost done with the sew along. There have been four videos prior to this one, including episode zero, which doesn't technically include any sewing, which is why I call it episode zero. But if you haven't seen those yet, you're gonna wanna go back and watch those videos to see how the bodice came together, how the pants came together, and all the prep work that we did leading up to even turning on our sewing machine. If you would like this video, subscribe and click the notification bell if you wanna get notified of all my videos. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Lindsay, I sew all my own clothes and about, I don't know, every three months or so, I post a sew along series just like this one where I take you step by step through sewing a particular garment. This one happens to be this cutie little knit jumpsuit. So if you're curious about sewing knits, curious about sewing jumpsuits, then you are in the right place. This video is kindly sponsored by Aliso. I will be talking to you guys about them a little bit more later on in the video, but you can thank them for this ad-free experience. <laughs> okay, that's it. Let's jump into it, take you over to my cutting table where we can wrap this all up. No pun intended, because there's kind of a little wrappy tie thing happening. All right, over to the table. Okay, so we have pants and a bodice and now it's time to attach those two things together so i'm going to lay my pants right side up or the front side up and right side out for what it's worth and then the top <clears throat> needs to have the front facing up but it needs to be inside out that way when we tuck our pants into our bodice we have right sides together where are the pants? <laughs> right, and then start at the side seam, right uh, sides together and the fronts matching. And then you are just going to pin all the way around this. I like to, like I said, start at the side seams and then match those up. Like so. And then I have uh, my centers, center of the pants is marked. And when I was cutting out the fabric, I went ahead and cut the center, uh, snipped into the center of the bodice as well. If you don't have that marked, you can just um, fold your side seams till they match, you know, like this, and then mark your centers that way. So I'm gonna do the center on the back as well. I've gotten in a pretty good habit of clipping um, my pattern pieces when they're on the fold clipping that fabric right at the fold because I know eventually I'm gonna have to match some centers. All right, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine. You cannot do this part on your serger. Um, and we're gonna sew this at three eighths of an inch, but I'm sorry, three, three quarters of an inch. And that is for our three eighths inch elastic. So I actually prefer to only have a quarter inch of ease in the elastic channel. So if I were going to be using the 3 8 inch elastic, then I would actually only sew the casing at half an inch. But as I told you in video zero or one, I'm gonna be using half inch elastic. I just like how substantial the half inch is. I don't know if it's because I have more of a full tummy or if it's because I'm on the higher end of the size range, but I don't like to go less than half an inch on my elastic. So three quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. Okay, and once you have that, again, you should have your pants sewn to your bodices. The overlay should be hanging loose. You shouldn't be sewing that to anything. Um, and it fits one to one all the way around. There should be no easing, none of that kind of stuff. It's pretty easy and straightforward. Now we need to come in and sew the raw edge at a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna zip this through my serger because my serger thread width is a quarter of an inch. And so that's gonna give me the exact um, seam allowance that I need for the channel. When you do this though, you need to leave a little bit of an opening to get your elastic in. Um, but sew all the way around except for a couple of inches. 
All right, and once you get that raw edge sewn, except for an inch or so, you're gonna wanna feed your elastic. Please don't judge my elastic. I am reusing it. It came out of that same fitted sheet that I used for the lining. So it's a little worn, but I think it'll be just fine. And again, if it's not, I can replace it one day. No big deal. But I wanna try and reuse it if I can. So this is my absolute most favorite tool for feeding elastic through casings. It only works on casings that are like half an inch or bigger though, um, because it has to get over this like humongous hump. But this is by Clover, it's awesome, I love it. But if you don't have one of these and you just do the old safety pin trick, um, where you attach your safety pin and then you feed it through. But this, I mean, honestly, like it's gonna take less than 10 seconds <laughs> to get it all through. It's really, really awesome. Makes really quick work of all of this. Okay, done and done. So I'm gonna overlap this. And then at this point, this is when we wanna try this on. Um, we want to make sure that the elastic is tight enough. Uh, we want to make sure that our hem is going to be right. You know, we can do like an initial fitting at this point. Um, but if you're good, like assuming everything's fine, then all you need to do is, where did the hole go? Um, sew up this, obviously you will sew the elastic together. I like to just use a zigzag stitch and go over the parts where it overlaps. And then you're going to sew up this and that is going to be done. Also make sure your elastic's not twisted. I swear no matter how hard I try, my elastic, my elastic is forever twisted. Um, so I will have to swap that around, but that's okay. All right, once you get that in, then you're going over to your ironing board uh, where we are going to press. Whoop. Oh my God, so cute. Where we are going to press you guys, oh my gosh, okay. Where we are going to press this whole thing up toward the bodice. And also because we already pre-pressed our hems, do you see how it's just subtly got that little fold in it? So now we don't have to futz with this over at our ironing board and trying to get it around and measure and do everything right. We can just fold it in on its little fold that is already in place and go ahead and hem it. All right, and while, while I am pressing my hems and pressing my waistband up, I'll talk to you. Oh, last thing about the Aliso iron that makes it super unique and such a great iron is that it lifts up all by itself off of the table. And it has a little foot here and then this big plate comes out as well so that when you are in between pressing, you do not have to turn it up on its heel and turn it back down again. It has genuinely saved my wrists. I don't know about you guys, but I start to feel like fatigued when I am in, in the middle of sewing. And this one little thing has just really changed everything. It's made it so much easier. Um, it's less work on my wrist, on my shoulder even. So if you have issues with any of that stuff with your, um, with your preferred hand, I mean, this is, this is a real, real game changer. So with the Pro Plus, um, another one of the advancements that they made was adjusting the, kind of like the sensitivity to that. And I think what was going on with the old one is that you would go to like move you would move your hand ever so slightly and it would pop up but now you can see you can kind of sort of let go and it's not going to pop up on you like you really have to fully let go of it for it to respond but if you're just grabbing this if you're i don't know you know doing something like that would have uh, triggered it before you know just grabbing the steam because you can see the bottom of my hand is like not on it anymore um but you can see now that totally is fixed and it only lifts up whenever you like fully, fully let go. And I'm telling you, it's not just a gimmick. Like it really, really makes such a big difference. They are done. I'm not gonna show you too much of mine because I don't wanna give it away, but you should have finished your jumpsuit at this point. Everything should be taken care of. Of course you can go in, clip those extra threads, you know, give it a nice good press and a steam and wear it proudly. 
in the last part of this series, I'm going to be showing you the big reveal, how my jumpsuit turned out. I'm going to do a pattern review talking about my thoughts about this pattern. I already have plenty. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly of it, um, just like I normally do every single Monday for my Make It Monday videos. If you want some more helpful information about garment sewing, download my free Ultimate Garment Sewing Guide of Guides. Why did I give it such a complicated name? I can never say it. Um, I have a link in the description box. Like I said, it's totally free to download seven different guides all in one massive guide. Huge, huge, huge shout out to Alyssa for sponsoring this series. I hope that you were able to kind of learn a little bit about their product, their main smart iron, as well as the mini iron that we covered, I think in episode one, and we'll be considering it for your next big iron purchase. I'm telling you, I've used them for years. I love them. And I am just so excited about the uh, improvements, true improvements that they made for the new Pro Plus. So I'm happy to share all of that with you and hopefully maybe inspire you to get a new iron. I have linked here in the end slate um, the playlist for this specific sew along. Every single video has chapters, so you should be able to go to the video you need, the section of the video you need, and pick up where you left off. But that is going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all very soon. Bye!